<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Demi Minter, and I'm one of the therapists at Community Health Network. Um, I'm here with one of our college interns, Mr. Phoenix Young. Hi, Phoenix. Hello, everybody. Um, today, we're just going to uh, talk with you all a little bit about dealing with depression and anxiety um, while you're in college, particularly in this pandemic time. Um, I want to begin just a little bit by just a brief definition of what is depression, because I know some people question whether or not they have depression or they're just feeling down or sad or they're just tired. And then a little uh, the definition of what is anxiety. So depression is a mood disorder and it is caused by persistent feelings of sadness and loss of interest. It will affect how you think, how you feel and how you behave. And this is persistent. So it isn't something that you're sad one day, but the next day you're good and you're hanging out with friends. It's persistent. So it's ongoing. Um, anxiety, and oftentimes they interact and feed off of each other, but anxiety is a nervous disorder. It is a state of ex a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension where you just don't feel like yourself. You just don't you're just not comfortable in your own skin. Um, it often will, will show up by um, worrying, fidgeting, um, sleep disturbance, um, uh, either overeating or loss of appetite totally, um, racing heartbeat, um, sweating, and feeling tired all the time. Both of these um, are often show up with a lack of motivation, where you just lose interest. You get invited out to stuff, you don't wanna go do anything. Um, you start to isolate, not quarantine from COVID, but you just choose. You don't wanna be around your family and friends. Um, so in college, that may not be a problem, but um, when you don't want to attend class and you don't want to do your work and you just kind of are apathetic. So those can be signs that maybe you want to either talk to a family member, a friend, um, a professor at school, um, or you may want to reach out for professional help. And we're here for that if you need it. There's also some apps that you can access online if, you, if you're concerned, but you're feeling unsure about what may be happening, um, you can access an app that will ask you some questions and give you a scoring. And then depending on how you score, you can choose to follow up at that time. I, I'm also going to just give you some of the symptoms that um, you may want to pay attention to. So for men, uh, anxiety can often show up as being very irritable and angry all the time, but you don't even know why. You're just short and snappy with people um, and people are like, hey, man, what's wrong with you? Like, what's up? And you don't want to be bothered. You're like, whatever, leave me alone. So that may be a sign, particularly if you're not going through um, a breakup or a loss of a loved one or something you can attach it to. But you just wake up and you're just angry for no reason. Don't ignore that. And men tend to ignore things and just kind of brush it off and be like, it is what it is. This is just me. Um, but don't ignore it because the other side of that is that then men often get into reckless behavior and they'll start to self-medicate with alcohol and drugs. People often say that marijuana, well, you know, I smoke because it helps me calm me down and make me feel OK. But it also stops you sometimes from following through with schoolwork, showing up for class, being prepared for tests. Not good combination um, for women. Anxiety often shows up as sadness, but once again, sad about, you don't know what you're sad about, but you just feel sad, or you feel guilty, or you have feelings of um, worthlessness, like, oh, it doesn't matter, nobody really cares, you know, if I'm here or I'm not here. And then women will self-medicate with food. They will overeat, um, even when they're not hungry, emotional eating, or they just stop eating altogether and you will notice weight loss. Also, substance use, women will begin to drink or abuse other substances. So I just want to give you guys these tips as something to be aware of, to be in touch with yourself and what may be going on with you and reach out for help when you think it would be beneficial or at least begin to ask the questions. Um, now, as I said, I am here with my college intern, Mr. Phoenix. And so we're going to have a little conversation about some of these things and then we'll give you guys some tips um, that may be helpful that you can do some self-help tips. So Phoenix, um, 
you're you're a college student. You're in college. You may have experienced some of some depression or anxiety. Um, tell us a little bit about what happens for you. Um, so my depression came from the situation I had at my my home, which a lot of people's case is um, going home and not feeling like it is your home. You know, like you're going home to be comfortable, and you don't even get that. Whenever you get home, you're out in the world all day and it's stressful and hectic. And then you get home hoping to sit there and relax and decompress and get your thoughts together and do other things that you need to do. But then you go home and it's the same feeling outside as it is inside. So it's just kind of a never ending cycle. And then it, it, it just wears on you. In my, my situation, uh, I was living with some people and it just was getting bad and bad. And I um, eventually just recluse to my room. I was just a recluse. I sat in my bed. I didn't really get up. I leave to work three or four hours early just to get out of my house and just sit at work and do nothing. And, you know, I, I saw this and this happened for a long time. It happened for about seven months. And, um, you know, the first few months, it's really hard because you don't really know what to do. You don't really know where to even take your first step to getting away from the problem. Um, but you just, I personally just started getting online and utilizing resources online to kind of navigate my way through the problem. You know, I took responsibility for the situation I was in and, and tried to fix it because I wasn't looking, I wasn't reaching out for help. I was talking to people, but you know, there's a difference between talking to people and getting help. That's um, right. So I, I did it myself for a little while and I just slowly built up these habits and behaviors that kind of compounded, you know, compound interest and it just kept compounding and getting better for me. And, Eventually, I reached out and got some more help, some um, professional help, and um, that really, really helped out in the long run. It's been about two years since that, uh, actually three years since that uh, took place. And, you know, of course, you go up and down still sometimes. It's not like you're never going to have these thoughts, and it's not like it's going to not sit there in the back of your head. It's not like it's alleviated forever, but you just find ways to deal with it and find ways to live with it. So it's not about really... Uh, destroying it in, in its totality. It's just learning how to live with it and be able to move forward in life with um, with the understanding that uh, it's going to be there. It's going to come up and down. It's like any emotion. Mm -hmm. Happiness does not just stay. It comes and goes, you know, and that's with every emotion. You just learn how to uh, navigate your way through these emotions. So Phoenix, at what point then, since you've been through this, at what point, because you said maybe seven months, what was your indicator or a sign that, wait a minute, maybe this is more, maybe I need to get some help. How did you know? Um, well, I, I moved out and I went and got my, uh, I actually moved back in with my uh, dad at the time. And, you know, I started doing things, trying to go back out and hang out with people and inviting people over and just kind of getting people who cared around me to be around them, which, uh, you know, as I said, compound, it compounded and got better and better. Um, but there after a while, and I was also self-medicating, like you said, I was, you know, smoking a lot of weed and drinking and going out and trying to hide from the fact of my reality. You know, I really was, it was, it, it really does put you in a different reality. But like you said, the long-term effects of that and the even short-term effects when you're in school or if you have ob uh, obligations, it really does hinder your ability to get them done. Yes. And, um, so I was sitting there one day and, you know, I, I just reached out and I was like, man, everything's good. Like, there's nothing wrong with my life right now. And I'm still not getting this feeling of satisfaction or even content necessarily. You know, I knew I was taking the proper steps to move forward. I knew I was doing everything I needed to do. And I knew I was doing it to achieve a goal in the long run, but I just wasn't getting the comfort day to day that I needed to kind of reassure myself to continue down that path. Um, so I reached out and went and talked to my psychiatrist and she just said, well, let's maybe start a medication real quick just to see if it's just a little chemical imbalance. And um, we started a specific medication and I took it. And after a while, I just leveled out. It was really interesting. You know, and my uh, illustration for that is, uh, you know, you're standing on, a, on the side of a highway and cars are going left and right and every other lane they're going opposite directions and you're like a piece of gum and you're trying to navigate yourself all the way to the other side and each car is just pulling you in each direction that's different thoughts and different um emotions that are connecting with those thoughts and just ripping you apart you know and it just it seemed to never stop never slow down you didn't have control of the cars you didn't have control of yourself you didn't have any control of how it was going to affect you either you know you're just along for the ride in a sense and um you know getting on the medication it kind of just brought everything back to a, a single unit instead of being pulled apart I was able to collapse everything back into myself and be myself and stand there and 
it's not like the thoughts and the feelings necessarily went away, but I was able to control it a lot better. I was able to stand mm -hmm. beside it and view it instead of being pulled along with it. You know, I was, okay. I, I, was able to, I was able to even go with the thoughts and travel down the road with it and take control of the wheel, kind of, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. Very good, Mr. Phoenix. I, I'm glad that you uh, got the help that you needed, and hopefully others will hear this and also get the help they need. One of the things we're noticing right now that uh, college students are having the most difficulty with is, is staying engaged with their classes as more things are virtual now. Um, and then just, just being easily distracted with social media and things like that. Uh, what are your thoughts on how social media is affecting college students, both negatively and positively? So last semester, that was basically my entire topic of choice to study. Um, some pros for it are pretty self-explanatory. The connection you get out of it, you know, you can just sit there and, you know, communicate with anybody and everybody all the time, which is great, you know. And, um, it offers tons of help and advice and, you know, um, YouTube, by instance, you can go on YouTube and find everything you need, literally anything you need. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of pros with social media, but the cons, I think, for ourselves outweigh the pros, just because the effect it has on you on a compounding rate throughout, you know, the year, or your life in general. I think that kind of affects you way worse than the uh, pros do. Um, some of the cons were uh after about an average of three hours of social media a day that's when you were having negative mental health effects so um people were spending on average you know seven seven hours a day on facebook and that clearly had a correlation with the feelings that they were having um, another one was using it at nighttime so daytime usage showed to be a little less strenuous than nighttime usage um, which they're still gonna have to do more studies on that to see why i think it's personally, because that night you're laying there and you're really thinking about your day, you're thinking about your life, you know, nobody else is around you. You don't have anything else to block your mind and block the reality that you're facing in life. And um, whenever you're sitting there at night, you're just sitting there kind of observing everybody else's life. And regardless if it's real or not, anybody can be what they want online. You know, you have the power to be what you want online too, but some people are clearly better than others at, um, making it look like they're living a better life than others. And um, many of us know that, especially now, now that uh, that social dilemma came out, a lot of people watched it and they know, they, they truly know like, oh, I know that their life probably isn't that great, but yes. I don't know if they understand it. You know, there's a difference between knowing and understanding things. That's so right. If you understand it, you can utilize it. So, um, yeah, social media, it's it has its perks, but you should definitely be cautious of how much time you're spending on social media, um, especially if you know that there's a problem. Like, just go to your phone and look at the time you're spending and think about how many hours you're spending on there compared to doing your schoolwork. You know, if you're yeah, in school yeah. and you have seven hours on Facebook, but you have 15 minutes on your studies, <laughs> then, I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going on, you know. And it's not yes, that might be a side. Right, right. So what would you suggest then um, in lieu of our social distancing and even though some things are starting to open back up, a lot of things are still not in terms of regular activities um, we used to participate in, in in college, what would you suggest for someone who is really feeling the social isol isolation? I don't know why I have difficulty saying that word sometimes. What would you say, how would you suggest they reconnect with others or stay connected? Well, that goes back to the social media tool. I mean, you can get on social media, you can go into discussion board in your curriculum and you can talk to people and create groups. There's plenty of people out there that are feeling the same way you're feeling and want the help that you're looking for as well. So if you can connect with two, three, four other people, then all the better, you know, I mean, it's up to you to take those steps and to reach out and reach find out. it though. You know, you have to take responsibility for the situation that we're all in and you have to take the responsibility to navigate yourself through the situation to find the end result you're looking for. Absolutely, Mr. Phoenix. Thank you so much. Really good feedback um, for your peers. And I, I want to add that um, if anyone is struggling, as Mr. Phoenix said, he got to a point where he realized he needed um, professional help. Like talking to friends and family is a very good start. Um, paying attention to your diet and trying to eat healthier, getting out, getting some exercise, even if it's going for a walk. 
um, just staying physical, doing some meditation or yoga, stretching, getting enough adequate sleep. I cannot stress enough how important it is to get enough rest so that your body can rejuvenate itself and reset for the next day. Um, those are things you can start with for yourself. But once you reach the point to where you feel like you've tried those things, you're doing that, not only are you getting um, adequate sleep, you're excessively sleeping. That's all you're doing is really sleeping. Um, then it may be time for you co to consider getting some professional help. There are some apps that you can access online. Um, we have some apps that will be on our website that you can access, which will give you an opportunity to um, follow a checklist and kind of score for yourself and see where you fall and make a determination if it may be time for you to ask for more help, whether that's first talking with a school counselor or reaching out to Community Health Network. We are here. You can access our website 24-7. Um, you can schedule an appointment online to see one of the therapists, myself, or one of our, we have many therapists at many different locations, um, but we are virtual, so you can meet with us online. Um, finances should not be an issue. We have many platforms to assist you financially, whether it's sliding scale or billing insurance or other ways that we will make sure that we are able to meet you where you are and provide the help that you need. Um, so at now we will offer some apps that you can um, access us online and we look, we hope that you take good care of yourself and that if you need the help, please do not hesitate to reach out and get the help that you need so you can be the best version of yourself. Thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions or feedback, uh, please put it in 